All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Alex Jules. I am the historian for the Fellowship of Free Thought. Today is April 17, 2011. It is 1110. Um, do we have any visitors today? We have an intimate group today. Any? Welcome. Welcome. Um, so a little bit of a disclaimer this morning. As an, as an organization, we are not a political entity. We do not necessarily advocate a particular party, party system, or a system of government, or a lack of government system, et cetera. Uh, however, as free thinkers, we know that government and those that set the laws that govern the land we live in have direct impact on our lives, our choices, and lack thereof. We think it very reasonable to critically evaluate such systems in a time where we see political unrest spreading like wildfire across the globe. Today's topic is democracy, or spreading democracy. Democracy, as defined by Merriam-Webster's, is a government by the people with the rule of the majority, a government in which a supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation usually involving periodically held free elections. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, etc. These words have meaning to us, or at least to those of us that have the ability to enjoy all of its meaning fully. This liberty is all delivered to and by the will of the majority, as by its definition, is the reflection of the will of the majority. Politicians use democracy, the will of the majority of the people, to go into war to aid the spreading of this ideology as an alternative to the will of just one, especially when the will of this one is in opposition of their interest. However, what distinguishes democracy from dictatorship, sometimes slim, as defined as dictatorship from uh, Princeton Dictionary, it is a form of government in which the ruler is an absolute dictator, not restricted by a constitution or laws or opposition, etc. It therefore seems that the proper distinction between the definitions is not power, but rather the number and makeup of the group that wields it. Democracy seems to vest in the general body of the citizens as opposed to a single dictator. However, what makes a democracy run by a malevolent or misinformed majority better than a not so malevolent dictator? I can't use malevolent. And why do we think that spreading this, of this idea is a good one? Or that it is so beneficial to those in the area where those that are just different may be stomped out by a dem dem uh, democratically elected body, often which the pool of dictators would naturally have arisen. In this case, democracy can be legitimized to justify the imposition of tyranny on those that differ, just the same. What about religion and its place in democracy? R.J. Rushduni, theologian, uh, states that Christianity is completely and radically anti-democratic. It is committed to spiritual aristocracy. This from the religious right, the assault on tolerance and pluralism in America. Rushduni also states one faith one law and one standard of justice did not mean democracy. The heresy of democracy has since then worked havoc in both church and state. Christianity and democracy are, inev are inevitably enemies. Yet we have a paradox where so many believers are so quick to try and export the idea of democracy while voting in politicians and leaders of power and influence who would usher in a theocracy. Yet the term de democracy still holds a warm place in public discourse. So the lines blur in effect muddying the argument of which is better, because we have to use the relative comparison. Better is often vague, where the word just may be much more relevant. Democracy merely states that a lot of people agree, but they may all agree in a fallacy but that's a tirade for another day. Today we will examine democracy. We have um, SMU political uh, science professor, Dr. Carissa Cloward, 
who is actually recovering from laryngitis, so she'll try and get through it. Um, she'll be talking to us about the recent democratic revolutions in Africa and why these defied predictions by political scientists. We'll also have a talk from Dr. Justin Fisher, who will be talking about, this, about some paradoxes involving uh, voting age cutoffs. And we will start things off with Dr. Zachary Moore, who will cover instant runoff voting. So, good morning and welcome.